Thanks again for joining us. We are here to talk about end of year fundraising strategy. So we're already hard to believe at the end of October. Uh, now is absolutely the time to be digging into your year end fundraising strategy. It's the most generous time of the year. It is the busiest time of year. There's a lot going on and a lot of donations coming in. So it's important to take the time now to plan ahead, get your campaign strategy in place, get all of your ducks in a row so that you can take the most advantage of this generous time of the year. For any of you that might be relatively new to Mighty Cause, just wanted to take a brief moment to make sure everybody knows who we are and what this platform's really all about. Uh, we were founded in 2006, have really spent uh, all of our time focusing on serving nonprofits uh, with crowdfunding tools, nonprofit fundraising tools, as well as all kinds of other uh, products and features to support your online fundraising efforts, team fundraising, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, CRM tool, donation page for your website, lots of really great things uh, available to our nonprofit partners. Our goal is really to help the nonprofit sector, our partners, our nonprofit partners to raise more funds for their mission, do it efficiently, effectively, and with easy to use tools. So uh, over the years, we've helped raise quite a bit for our nonprofit partners. Um, we've gotten lots of great feedback and support over the years from these partners to help constantly improve uh, the product offering that we have. And uh, we also, as I mentioned, have full suite of nonprofit software tools available. So depending on what you need for your organization, whether it's just a platform to host your end of year campaign, or you're looking for your year round solution to replace maybe a PayPal button on your website or your CRM tool, we've got lots of options available to explore and find the right fit for your organization. And with that, we will jump into really the meat of today's presentation, which is focusing on your end of year campaign. And it will be here before we know it. Uh, lots going on right now, this time of year. So we wanted to really boil it down to 10 tips that you can start today to get this campaign running. So that with all of the other things you've got going on, whether it's fundraising or multiple other jobs that you are responsible for, for your organization, you can take some actionable steps right after this training to get your campaign up and running. So the first is of course to set a goal. Similar uh, to any campaign or really any undertaking that you might start, always important to start with a goal. That is going to help keep you focused, keep you on track as you move throughout the project, and then at the end, give you something to measure against. So one of the easiest ways to set your goal for your end of year campaign is to look at any deficits or gaps that you have in 2018 goals that you set, whether it's goals set within your development team, goals set by your executive director, or actual dollar amount deficit to reach your budget for the end of the year. Starting there and working backwards. If you have still $20,000 to raise to meet your goals or to hit the expected income for your budget for the year, that's a great place to start. Um, but there's lots of other things that you can set goals around for your end of year campaign, whether it's, um, the number of individual donors that are going to contribute, the number of recurring donations that you'll have uh, new donors sign up for. Maybe it's launching a new program or initiative. Lots of different types of things that you can set goals around. So think about what's really important to your organization and then set goals based on that. And whatever your goals are, always helpful to keep in mind your SMART goal uh, strategies. So be specific with your goals, not just, I want to raise more money, I want to raise a lot of money. Give something specific, that way you can measure progress throughout your campaign to see how close you are to meeting that goal, as well as post-campaign looking back. Something you can measure, always important, make it tangible. Something that's attainable. You may want to raise $100,000 in your end of year campaign, and that may be great and would be really exciting, but look at what typical fundraising campaigns that you've run in the past, how they've done, and set attainable increases in that. So be realistic about what you really can accomplish and set a goal that 
is a little bit of a stretch, but not too much of a stretch that you will get discouraged too easily on in your uh, campaign. And finally, time bound. Of course, with end of year campaign, you've got the benefit that that end of year season ending on December 31st is a great end to your uh, campaign and to your goals. So just a couple things to keep in mind when you set those initial goals and really taking the time to step back and think about those goals now will help make sure that every other step that you follow throughout the campaign really is focused on that key goal. That's really important to making sure that you don't have uh, mission creep or um, idea creep with your end of year campaign. There's lots of really cool, fun, creative things you can do, but a small organization or an organization with limited resources, you've always got to take the time to think, is this going to help me reach my goals for this campaign? So once you've set a goal, you can move to the next step, which is of course setting the focus for your campaign. And this is something that you will need to do for any campaign that you run year round. Um, but the end of year, it's even more important to set a focus because you're competing against all the other nonprofits out there that are also running their end of year campaign. So donors are seeing much more information, receiving many more asks than they do in a typical month. So you need to make sure that your campaign can stand out in that crowd, rise above the noise of all the emails and mail solicitations they're getting. And a really helpful way to do that is a meaningful focus to your campaign, a story, what sets yours apart. And once you set that focus, create testimonials, copy, video, all kinds of content to support that focus so that throughout your campaign, any emails that you send, anything you post on social media, any blog posts that you do, your donation page, the thank you experience, any follow-up you're doing after the campaign, all of that should tie back to that single focus. They should all reinforce that key focus. And so taking the time to create all that content ahead of time will make sure that you can plug and play into all of the different uh, outreach and communication strategy that you have for the campaign. And kind of taking this a step further, there's a couple of different ways that you can help set your focus for the campaign. Of course, always helpful to look at your needs internally as an organization and decide what it is that you need to fundraise for. Do you have a program that specifically needs to meet a budget or meet a goal by the end of the year? That might help you determine where you should focus your fundraising efforts. But if not, there's a couple of other things that you can do to define a focus for your campaign. The first is tangible impact fundraising. Similar to choosing a specific program that you want to support, this is really all about making the impact of a donor's gift feel very tangible at this time of year. It's especially important, but it's always helpful for a donor to really see the impact of their gift, especially donors giving at smaller gift levels. It might be hard to see what my 10 or 15 or $25 gift can really do in your quest to end hunger or um, reduce homelessness. Those are really big goals. So by making tangible, by making gifts tangible for donors, you can really encourage them to give at that level. You can help them really understand your mission and why it's so critical. So a tagline like, $25 can provide 10 meals for a family in need. That's something that's relatively simple, but it's really focused and makes it very clear to the donor the impact that they can have. So choosing something like that, how that becomes relevant for your organization is of course different for each group depending on their mission and how they carry out their programming. But finding something simple like that, any donor can really understand $25 can provide 10 meals for a family in need. That's something that really could resonate with the donor. It's not complex. It doesn't get into statistics or um, how, how all different complex factors in society affect hunger. It just gets to the core of how the donor can support. So try looking at a donation level 
that would be meaningful for your organization and your mission and see if you can't create a campaign, a tagline around that. Another approach is, of course, story-based fundraising. This is uh, especially uh, helpful, of course, at this time of year when donors are really looking to uh, they're looking to give in a meaningful way. It's the holiday season, whatever holiday they celebrate. Uh, it's the holiday season. It involves often more time with family. It's a great opportunity for donors to be reminded of what they feel grateful for, how blessed they are in their lives. So connecting with that emotion, appealing to that part of a donor is even more important at this time of year. So find a story about your organization, an individual that has been served, a family that has gone through your programming, whatever it might be, and create your campaign around that story. When a donor sees statistics about, you know, 100, uh, there are, you know, 500 families in the Cleveland area that uh, are homeless, whatever it might be. That's it's a big number, it's a big idea, it's a little bit harder for donors to connect with that. But if you show them the story of one individual family and they can connect with them, maybe they are also a mother or a father or uh, whatever it might be, that, that personal connection with your story as a representation of your mission, that's gonna really help donors connect. So see if there's not something that you could um, create around that that story concept. And then finally, of course, holiday-based fundraising. It's a time of year where people are making gifts, asking for gifts, um, sharing with other people what they want for the holidays. So you can have fun with that in terms of encouraging uh, donors to ask their friends and family to donate instead of making a gift or getting a gift for them this year. You can create a wish list of items, like a Christmas list, if you will, uh, for items that your nonprofit might need or things that might make a difference for your nonprofit. Lots of different ways that you can do that. But again, just appealing to uh, a donor's uh, sense of uh, feeling around this holiday season. So once you've done that initial work to set a goal and outline your focus for your campaign, you can really dig into the process of putting pieces in place that will help this campaign be successful. And one of the most important things uh, that I think you can do to make your end of your campaign more successful is to secure a matching grant. This is um, a, a very impactful strategy uh, both for your donors when they go to make their gift and they see that potential to double their impact or triple their impact, but it's also a very relatively easy way to see a high increase in your overall total raised. If you can secure a $5,000 or $10,000 matching gift from a donor, then you only need $5,000 or $10,000 from your overall donor base in order to meet that match and double your overall contributions. So when it comes time to securing a matching grant, a couple of steps to take in mind. The first is of course prospecting. Look at your list of supporters, whoever that list might be, and identify some key individuals or small groups that might make sense as a prospect for a major gift. First and foremost, always consider your board of directors. Do you have a single board member that might have the potential to make a gift like this? Or can you ask your board of directors to come together, combine their impact to offer a match? Is there a major donor that maybe hasn't yet given their big gift this year? You could encourage them to give that gift in the form of a match so that you can make it go further. And of course, corporate sponsors and partners uh, matching grants are a great way to engage corporate partners because you have the opportunity often to promote that match. You can share with your donors and supporters. You can post on social media about the matching donor 
in this case, the corporate partner. And oftentimes that's a really important piece of corporate partners being able to offer this support in the first place is that promotion that you're able to offer them in return. So first, look at your list of uh, potential contacts and prospects and identify some key people that might be a good fit for this. And the next step, of course, is to cultivate the relationship with those individuals. Take time to communicate with those people, learn about their interests, learn about their goals when it comes to giving. You may have uh, you know, a major donor's uh, perspective or motives might be very different than a corporate partner when they go to make a gift to your organization. So it it's, it's helpful to take the time to have those conversations, maybe go to lunch with that major donor, set up a meeting with the corporate partner, learn about their interests. And then once you take the time to do that, you can craft your ask to really appeal to their specific interests. Rather than just putting out a blast to everyone that's on this prospect list of, will you offer a matching grant? Take the time for that personal outreach, that personal ask with the individual or the corporate partner and craft the ask in a way that it's going to appeal to them. So as I already mentioned, corporate partners might be much more interested in the opportunity to have promotion when it comes to making their gift. So when you ask that corporate partner, make sure to share all the ways that you can promote their support, all the ways that you will share their logo, share their name, post about them on social media. How will they benefit from your promoting this matching grant? A major donor might have very different motivations. They may not be interested in receiving that recognition. They may not want to be recognized at all, but that major donor, especially if they've given to your organization over time in the past, might be very committed to the mission of your work. So appealing to them on what you will be able to accomplish by their gift turning into a matching grant and leveraging that support for more donations from your general public, that may be something that really appeals to that major donor. So think about what it is that's going to speak to them and craft your ask, your personal ask accordingly. And on uh, the Mighty Cause platform, you've got lots of options to uh, in terms of how to promote and how to offer your match. So you can do a standard one-to-one -one match where the donor has the chance to double their donation, but you can also do more creative other things. You can have a triple match so that um, depending on the amount that you're able to receive from a donor, you can offer uh, for every $1 a donor gives, $2 will be matched. You can uh, match a certain dollar amount of each gift that you get. Um, lots of different things that you can do to kind of make it interesting, make it fun. And again, appeal to what, what your matching donor is really trying to accomplish with their match. You can do multiple small matches. You can combine matches into one big match, uh, especially as you look through the end of your giving season whenever you start, there's likely going to be a longer time frame, perhaps than an average campaign. If you start fundraising in November and you're going all the way through December 31st, that's a long time to be hitting the same exact message. So you can keep it interesting by having a match that you offer, whether it's maybe just for the day on Giving Tuesday, just for the day on the last day of the year, or maybe the last week of the year, Think about how you might be able to sprinkle in the matching grant throughout the campaign to add some something new and exciting into your campaign. And of course, once you secure that match, that promotion, how you share it with your donors, how you publicize it on your page is really going to make the difference in terms of encouraging that extra excitement and urgency from your donors visiting your page to make their donation. So. When you get that match, you can post that on your Mighty Cause page. You can recognize the donor if they'd like to be recognized. You can also keep them anonymous if it's one of those major donors that might prefer their name to not be recognized. There will be a countdown live on your page showing how much time is left on the match as well as uh, what the dollar amount is left in the match. 
So lots of different ways that right on your page, you will be adding in sense of urgency, encouraging those donors to make their gift. And it's important you also advertise this match across all of your communication strategy for the campaign. So posting on social media that you have a match and your progress towards the match as you get closer to meeting it, making sure that that is mentioned in all the email campaigns that you have while the match is active. Let donors know that they can double their donation if they make their gift now. Those kinds of things are what's going to encourage that gift, that donor to take the step and click the button in your email to visit your page and make their gift. So make sure you really make the match work for you. Once you take the time to secure it, how can you really use it to your benefit, to promote it, to leverage it as much as possible to get that further support from your existing donor base? And kind of elaborating on that just a bit, it's important to take the time now to plan out your communication strategy for your end of year campaign. Again, it's a busy time of year, lots going on, people in and out for the holidays. Really great way to make sure that you have enough messaging, consistent messaging across all of your channels. You have all of the assets you need, all the lists you need to actually send emails when they're supposed to. Taking the time to sit down and plan out your strategy now will make sure that you cover all the bases of reaching out to your donors wherever they might be. So multi-channel communication strategy is of course critically important. Email is a central focus of your campaign. When and how will you send emails? But that's not the only piece of your end of year campaign. How will you complement that on social media? How will you complement that with the content that donors and visitors are seeing on your website? Are you considering any direct mail approaches to uh, complement as well? If you're gonna do direct mail, that's something you have to decide sooner rather than later so that you can get all of those pieces into the works. So think about all the different places that your donors might hear from you, all the different places where you have an audience, and consider how you can really implement a strategy for that channel. Kind of looping back to the whole reason that it's important to set a focus for your campaign is really because you want to have a simple, consistent message that is going to appeal to your donors across all of your communications. So once you've set that focus, you should be able to develop that, that single message that you will hit across all of your emails, all of your social media posts. Is it that tangible dollar amount donation level and the impact that can be had? Is it something related to a story of an individual or a family served by your programming? Keep it simple. Again, the average donor doesn't spend all of their time in the weeds of your nonprofit, understanding the nuance of your mission and why you do programming a certain way. So keep it simple with them. Always make sure that in every piece of communication that you put out, you have a very clear ask to make a donation and including the link to your donate page the best content, the best social media post, if it doesn't have a really easy way for donors to take action and get to where you want them to, to make their gift, they won't be able to take action. Donors are not likely to go out of their way to search for opportunities to give to your organization, make it really easy for them. Big donate button in your emails. Always making sure that it's really easy for them to find the action that you want them to take. And of course, doing this now will allow you to plan ahead, make your schedule from now through the end of the year, but thinking in particularly what you might wanna do for the last week of the year, which starts to really ramp up giving, and then of course the last day of the year, when people are really trying to hit that deadline for tax deduction, what is your communication strategy? Again, you may be out of the office, other people may be out of the office for the holidays, so taking the time now to prepare that strategy, you can schedule those emails and social media posts in advance so those things can continue to fire and engage while you may be out of the office for the holidays. And when it comes to email in particular, there's lots of things that you can do to make your emails more effective. The first and the most important is to segment your audience. So you have 
at least this year, but multiple years of data about how donors and supporters have interacted with you in the past. So rather than just sending one email to every email address you have in your donor database file, asking everyone to make a $75 gift for the end of year, think about how you can break your audience up into different groups to speak more directly to them, to acknowledge where they are in their process of supporting your organization. Take special effort to look at who maybe hasn't made a gift yet this year. They've given in the past, but they've not yet given this year. That group deserves extra attention at this time of year, encouraging them to make that gift, making sure you retain that donor. Look also at donors that gave last year during your year-end giving campaign. That's your signal. They've already chosen to give to you once at the end of year. They like this time of year to give. So again, plan special communications for them, as well as other groups that support your organization. Uh, recurring donors, volunteers, board members, maybe people that have never made a gift to your organization but have just supported at events. Take time to segment your audience and prepare emails to, um, to engage those people in a way that they'll feel acknowledged. Also make sure that your emails are mobile friendly. Um, that is a key piece of how people will read and interact with your emails over this uh, end of year giving season. Your donation page on Mighty Cause will be mobile friendly, so make sure the email that will get them there is also mobile friendly. A B test on different subject lines, different images, different stories. See what appeals to donors, what gets a higher open rate or click rate, and then choose to adapt your strategy based on that. Whatever you do for your end of year campaign, it's really important to involve your board of directors. This is what they're here for. They're here to support your organization, to advocate for your organization, and fundraising is a key piece of that. So many board of directors will have had to set goals for the year in terms of uh, dollar amounts that they will either give or get uh, to contribute to your organization. So review their progress towards those commitments. If they have 5,000 left to give before the end of the year, very helpful for them to know that now and really use that as their, their motivation uh, to support your end of year campaign. Share your plans with them and give them a specific role. Ask them maybe to give a match. Ask them to solicit donations from their personal contacts. Provide whatever kind of information, content, drafted email that might help them do that. See if they might be interested in hosting an event or supporting you or your executive director with any of those meetings you might have with major donor prospects or corporate partners. Uh, kind of following on that, um, this is a very important time of year to connect with major donors. Major donors will likely not just respond and make a large gift just because they receive one of your blast emails. This is a really important time to take a personal touch point with your major donors who maybe haven't yet given this year or maybe prospects that, you, that you're trying to convert to a major donor. Take the time for that personal one-on-one -on -one engagement with yourself, maybe inviting a board of directors member to come with you for this meeting. Really connect with these donors, cultivate them, just like we talked about with that matching gift ask. It's the same kind of strategy here, but prepare a targeted ask. You can ask them to give a matching grant. You can ask them to increase their gift amount based on what they gave last year, or based on your conversations, your cultivation, you may know of something else that might be a really appealing thing to them, or depending on your relationship with the donor, you may wanna leave it open-ended and see how they want to give but making sure that you give them some opportunities, give them some ideas of what will be meaningful and impactful for your organization. And of course, just like with all of your donors, which we'll talk about in just a moment, but make sure you plan a meaningful thank you for these major donors. This is a time of year when you get really busy and bogged down in the details, and some of that really important stewardship and follow-up might fall between the wayside. Make sure that's not the case with these major donors. They are just 
uh, every bit as important as every other supporter, and they deserve that extra special touch, whether it's a phone call from your executive director, a one-on-one -on -one meeting uh, with a board member, or um, the executive director, whatever it might be, make sure you take the time to consider what that meaningful thank you really will be for that donor. As you think of your end of year campaign, Giving Tuesday is a great way to kick that off. So um, happens every year on the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, just as donors are really starting to kind of Think about the holiday season. They've done Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Giving Tuesday is a great opportunity to really kick off your campaign. And it doesn't have to take away from end of year giving. I know there's always a little bit of a concern. Well, if I ask my donors to give at the end of November, will they give again at the end of December? And uh, research over the last few years has really showed that Giving Tuesday does not take away from end of year giving at all. It actually has the opportunity to supplement end of year giving. So you'll want to make sure that you have special plans, of course, to make Giving Tuesday work for you in conjunction with your end of year campaign. And that's going to involve both the messaging and the focus for both of those campaigns. How do they connect to each other? How do they build on each other? But also, how are you communicating with donors that give during Giving Tuesday during the rest of your end of year giving season? That's absolutely a case of a group that needs to have special segmentation. If somebody makes a gift to your organization at the end of November, they shouldn't be solicited just like everyone else in the middle of December. If you ask them again, you'll want to do it in such a way that you acknowledge their gift on Giving Tuesday. So taking the time to think through that now, how the two play off, it's really a great way that you can start the end of your giving early, where you might uh, not really see your traction pick up till the middle of December by starting with Giving Tuesday You can give yourself a big boost right at the end of November and then carry that all the way through the month of December And Mighty Cause has our own Giving Tuesday event that we are hosting on our platform Where we're offering lots of perks to our partner nonprofits that host their Giving Tuesday campaign on our site including fee-free fundraising for your nonprofit so Donors will have the chance to cover a platform fee, but if they don't, your nonprofit won't pay that platform fee during Giving Tuesday. We're offering over $10,000 in prizes that will go directly to participating nonprofits, free access to our premium fundraising tool, and free trainings and resources available on our website. So if you haven't yet, definitely take the time to sign up and join our Giving Tuesday event as a really critical step in launching your end of year fundraising campaign. Another thing to keep in mind for your end of year campaign is how you might encourage peer to peer fundraising. So um, I, I always include this graphic here because I think it's a really important way to visualize why is peer to peer fundraising important, valuable and exciting. It might seem like something that's a little daunting to take on. It might seem like an extra thing that you don't really want to incorporate into your campaign, but you have such an opportunity to expand your network when you activate individuals, supporters, to connect to their own network on your behalf. Especially again at this time of year, people are often looking for a way to get more involved, to give back in a bigger way. So channel that generosity by asking them to start a fundraiser for your organization. Really great way for them to encourage their family and friends, instead of a gift for the holidays, make a donation to this cause that I'm supporting with this fundraiser. It's really uh, easy messaging at this time of year when, when donors are already kind of in that holiday gift giving season. And you have opportunities to encourage that, making it even easier by starting a team fundraiser. For example, you could start a team campaign where each of your board of directors has their own fundraising page for your organization. They can customize that page to tell that story. They send that page out to their friends and family. They can kind of compete against each other to see which board member can raise the most for your organization. That's just one example of a way to use team fundraising and to really make the most of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising to allow those supporters 
that are really at that ready to take that next level of supporting your organization, ready to engage their network, share their own personal story about why they love and support your organization. Whatever you do throughout your entire campaign, it's really important to think about the thank you. Think about that follow up. So I already mentioned it a little bit earlier, but this is a really busy time of year. And if you don't plan ahead with your thank yous, it can be very easy to let some of those thank yous fall through the cracks. Let that that important stewardship go because you're so focused on that acquisition of gifts. So taking time to plan things ahead of time will make sure that you really do have that comprehensive strategy. On the Mighty Cause platform, you've got a couple of options uh, to really tell that thank you in a meaningful way. The first is you, for every campaign that you host, you can build your own thank you page with a custom CTA. So that's the example you're seeing here. You can customize this thank you page. After every donor makes their donation, this thank you page is what they'll see. You can decide the text that goes there, you can add photo, you can add video, and you can customize the CTA if you want donors to go back to your blog, go back to your website, whatever it might be, you can set that CTA for them. So that's immediately what donors will see after making their gift. Really important that you, again, kind of continue that message that you've started in your emails, social media, on the donation page about what this campaign is all about. Continue that message through to the thank you page, through to the thank you receipt. You also have the opportunity to customize, uh, to add customized language to the thank you receipt that every donor will receive. So both in these tools and outside of these tools, this is a great way, great time to try and incorporate video. It's a really um, great way to connect with your donors in a different way, um, especially at a busy time of year when donors might be receiving lots of emails. How can you stand out by making a fun, meaningful video that a donor might actually take a couple of minutes to watch rather than read through text? Uh, plan for personal follow-up. Who are those donors, whether it's donors that give over a certain dollar amount, um, matching grant donor, major gifts donor, brand new donors, who are those donor groups that might need personal targeted follow-up beyond the email that they receive and the uh, thank you page that they'll see? Who might need a personal phone call or a personal handwritten letter from your executive director? Plan that out ahead of time so that you know who and when uh, you'll be doing those kinds of follow-up tasks. Uh, and finally, think think beyond the end of year into your follow-up next year. Again, with a busy time of year, donors might easily miss your thank you that comes during the end of your season. Once things kind of quiet down in January and February, they're not seeing many emails from nonprofits they support, that's a great time to follow up and remind them of the impact they had with their gift. Share what you've been able to accomplish with the funds you raised during your end of your campaign. That follow-up will really encourage the donor, donor that they made the right decision by giving to your organization in the first place. And that is going to have an impact when they receive that next solicitation from you, when they receive your communications throughout the year and kind of how they think about when they might come back to make their next donation to your organization. And finally, Start planning today. Uh, end of year might seem far away, but we're already at the end of October. The giving season has already started, so get started today. You've got lots of action items that you can take right after this webinar to get started. Organize your team, whether it's staff members, volunteers, board of directors, whoever it is, organize your team and start getting these plans in place so that you can really make sure you set yourself up for a successful end of your campaign. And with that, I will open it up for any questions that we have. And it uh, looks like so far the only question is uh, for a copy of the presentation. We will have the presentation recorded, so anybody who registered will definitely have access to a recording of the presentation so that you can uh, follow up on any of the items and or share with any colleagues. So. We will make sure to get everyone a copy of that. And I'm not seeing any other questions right now. 
So I'll let everybody get back to their day. If you have any questions as you are putting together your end of your fundraising campaign, please feel free to reach out to support at mightycause.com and we'll be happy to get you started. Uh, we also have uh, tons of resources available um, both on our blog and our support forum, uh, helping you to actually move through the setup process of how to get your page set up. Uh, so make sure you check out our blog for more information there. Um, and again, we'll send this information and follow up. Thanks for your time and uh, good luck with your end of your fundraising strategy. Thanks everyone.